Back in my day, we had to refill our batteries with water if we wanted to go crawling. It's not too much of a lie, actually. Just a teeny, teeny white lie. Depending on what rig you had, actually. There was the nylon crawler that came out really, really early in the day. It was found in Walmart and it did have lead acid batteries in it. And you did have to keep up on those cells because it's the old like non-sealed style. You got to put the water in, make sure the sulfuric acid isn't boiling off. But really when at least I got into crawling, all we had was nickel metal hydride and NICADs. Most people were using nickel metal hydrides and it was kind of neat because you could build like knuckle packs with them, you know, three cells on each side or four cells on each side, depending on what you were running. And we were all running somewhere from 7.4 to like 9.6 volts nickel metal hydride for the most part. NICADs, you know, they were still around, take a good fast charge, they get hot, nice little resistance, but the nickel metal hydrides had a lot more runtime. And especially if you're building small packs with the two thirds A size, I believe it was at the time, those were like 1300 milliamp hours and that was plenty for the nickel metal hydrides. But within a few years, we started getting a lot more lipos on the scene. We've seen a lot of change in LiPo batteries just in the last, well, let's see, I guess it's been about 20 years. If I remember correctly, Thunder Power started coming out with their two cell LiPos around 2002. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you remember a little bit better. And the funny part was there really wasn't any chargers for them at the time. And then we still had to have like balance chargers and things like that. The first ones that came out on the scene, uh, the chargers were just bulk chargers and then you would plug in the Astro Flight Blinky, if you remember that guy, and that would balance them for you. And, you know, the lights would blink. That's why it's called a Blinky. And then as technology and time went on, we got balance chargers. We got uh, fast chargers. We got all sorts of different things, you know, because at first you couldn't charge more than one C. So it took an hour to charge these. And that was the, that was what you get. Uh, and the only way to go faster than that was to fool the charger and tell it that it was, you know, twice as big as it was. It still wasn't a good idea. But now we have chargers. Let me just grab one. Now we've got chargers like this ISDT D2. This isn't exactly a new one, but it is a, let's see, 200 watt. It'll do 12 amps of output. It is a dual charger. It has AC power built right in. I mean, this, this is super big news. We got our balance leads on here. You plug it in, it does everything for you. You don't have to mess with it. And you can just tell it what amperage to charge at. So back in the day, like I was saying, you could only charge at one C, which was one times capacity. So if it's a five amp hour or 5,000 milliamp hour cell, five amps, that's what you did. Otherwise it got really hot and it didn't last long. But also back in the day, everything was rated for like 30 cycles or so. Uh, one still one problem that we have with our balance leads is that they were originally designed for a battery that would only last about 30 cycles. And so they really don't like being plugged in and plugged out a whole bunch of times. Now they'll, st they'll still do more than 30, but if you have aftermarket accessories, lighting kits and everything that you're powering off of here, you're doubling the cycle time of your balance port and that can cause issues. I've certainly had these little balance ports fail on me, you know, maybe have a pin get bad or just corrosion because it went in and out so much that the nickel plating got wiped off and then you have copper underneath or some recycled amalgam of copper underneath. You know, long gone are the days where they did gold plating on these because they wanted them to last a long time. But so many different things in the technology have changed. And uh, the biggest one is definitely that charge rate. Now you have 5C charge and 6C charge rates, which 5C is, uh, what is that, 12 minutes for a charge and they don't even hardly get hot. 6C charge rate is going to be 10 minute charge time. That is so fast for these, especially in a crawler when this 2200 milliamp hour easily can last an hour of runtime or more. Uh, this 35, this is like 3500 milliamps. This is probably two hours of runtime. And that's another way that our packs have actually gotten a lot better. So the C rate has gone up. So the discharge rate has gone up and made them more power dense for the same package. And also we can charge faster because of that. But our capacity for the same size of pack has actually gotten better. And there's a very, very slight difference between these packs. Very slight. But this is a 2200 milliamp hour from, oh, 10... 12 years ago, maybe. Let's see if we have a date on this. It's a little puffy by now. These have all given up the ghost. Uh, this was a 35C pack. And this one is rated 30C, which is probably more true. Uh, and it's a 3,500 milliamp hour pack. So it's a third more, or I guess it would 
it'd be like 50% more runtime than this, depending on which way you're doing the math. This is uh, a third less, this is 50% more. But the pack size is for all practicality about the same size. The weight of these is pretty much the same weight. I could throw them on a scale, there's gonna be some grams difference, you know, a little bit more run times, probably a little bit, little bit bigger. Uh, they both have 12 gauge wire, yeah, so the weight's gonna be similar at least. But as technology has gotten better, you can get more and more runtime into a pack, or you can squeeze more and more power density out of a pack, which means it'll discharge at a higher amp draw for the same size or capacity that you're talking about. And those, that's really the big difference, but pretty much everybody's gone to LiPo. Every now and then you'll get a ready to run rig that doesn't have LiPo, but most of the rigs, you know, TRX4 and, and uh, the little, this little guy, this little guy down here, the Mini Capra, these come with lithium batteries and they come with a little charger, just a USB charger. And that's, that's honestly where a lot of the chargers are going to these days, especially if you don't need a high rate. If it's a really teeny battery for a really tiny crawler, you don't need but maybe an amp on the output or 0.8 amps or something like that. And so the chargers have all gone to just a straight five volt USB input. If it's a single cell, then it, it lowers the voltage down. And if it's a two cell, then it raises the voltage up. If you're doing a three cell, yeah, it's really not likely you're gonna get enough power from USB rail. This is two amps limited. It ends up being kind of a problem in that regard, but there are a lot of RTRs that are coming with just straight USB chargers these days, and they don't come with the power supply. You gotta find your own USB power supply. Uh, but they're, you know, everybody's got power supplies for their phones and stuff like that pretty much. And even this charger, you know, we've, we've got this, this uh, five volt two amp out on there, and that allows us to charge some of these, you know, little ready to run packs with their USB going straight into your uh, balance cable sort of situation. It's kind of cool, but the chargers have gotten much better, more power dense. Our batteries have gotten much better, more power dense, more runtime in the same sort of package. And honestly, I don't miss the days of nickel metal hydride. And I don't miss the days of having to refresh those pack or, you know, a, a balance charge. You have to discharge them all the way down. You had to cycle them so that they didn't have a memory. Or if they did get a memory, you had to cycle them over and over to try to get that memory back out of it. And that was just a big hassle. Now, LiPos do have their own problems. You don't want to store them fully dead. You don't want to store them fully charged. And, uh, you know, if you, if you treat them nice, they'll last many years on the shelves. But otherwise, yeah, I don't miss the old days. Sorry, uh, topping off our, our lead acid batteries or dealing with nickel metal hydride or NICAD memory problems, low run times of those. I mean, back in the day, even for the racers, you had to tune your motor turns and your gearing so that your battery would dump just after the finish line or maybe right before the finish line. And these days with modern packs, I mean, the runtime is so ridiculous with a nice efficient brushless setup and like a 5,000 or I mean you can get 7,000 milliamp hour two cell packs that are the same size as the old racing packs the six cell packs were but you could probably race for 30 minutes on an efficient setup that's insane okay so if you're going super fast maybe 15 minutes the heats were what five minutes back in the day or three and a half minutes back in the day you tell me in the comments I wasn't a racer but uh yeah yeah boy batteries have changed so uphill both ways in the snow with no clothes on, of course. But these days, it's not so bad. Y'all kids got it good, let me tell you. So let me know in the comments what you have seen over the years. Maybe some of your old favorite battery packs. What are your favorite brands back in the day? Or maybe your favorite battery brands today. Well, those old, uh, what were those, those 3300 milliamp hour, the blue shroud, nickel metal hydrides. Oh, man, it's been so long, I can't remember. I still got some kicking around somewhere. Uh, used to build my own packs for fun. So yeah, yeah, let me know in the comments. Let's get a little bit of nostalgia going for the good old days of nickel metal hydride, NICAD, and lead acid. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.